everyone. Welcome to Coffee and Grace, where we love our coffee and we all need God's grace. Today, my cup is my coffee and grace cup. And in my cup, I have white chocolate and vanilla, and I have some um, Italian sweet cream. That's it for the coffee today. And as you can see, we are outside. It is about 36 degrees today and it's beautiful. And I'm just out getting a tiny bit of fresh air. And today I just wanted to read a quick devotion from um, this new book that I have started from Priscilla Schreier and it's called Awaken. And I, so far I've only done two days and it is amazing. If you have not read any of her stuff, go ahead and pick up something. This is amazing. This is only a 90 day, 90 days with God who speaks. And this is actually a book that I picked up over at my mom's. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this devotion. It was just amazing. It's actually day one. And then I did day two today and it was just as amazing. So anyway, this is day one and it's called morning. They gathered it morning by morning, every man as much as he should eat. But when the sun grew hot, it would melt. Exodus 16, 21. There's something about what happens when the sun warms up, the heat of the day's trials, the energy stealing blaze of its pressures and events. Worries can intervene in those afternoon hours when time is racing past so quickly, when we're certain we can't handle them within the amount of daylight that's left to us. Sometimes such stresses can be overwhelming and brazen enough to melt us in our tracks, causing the strength and resolve of our hearts to weaken and disappear. And while this reality is as current and relevant as the day you're living right now, it's also as old as an entire generation of Old Testament Israelites. They emerged from their tents at first light each morning, eager to gather God's gift of manna that he had strewn across the ground overnight. This was a critical part of their day, an appointed activity, for they knew once the sun ascended towards its towering position in the sky, this bread from heaven would melt away. Yes, the collection in their bowl would be more than ample for the day's requirements. They would be able to serve the families and be assured of God's provision based on the abundant measure of what he'd given them. But they would need to wait until next morning before they'd find it new again, ready for another day's work. Perhaps this ancient illustration depicts for us the reason why our hearts so often stir for a fresh word from God, fresh bread, early in the morning, before the heat of the day has set in. I realize not everyone is a morning person. I realize too, depending on your stage of life and your weekly schedule, your morning may occur at various uncustomary hours of the day, but I'm convinced that morning is a principle, not merely a time of day. It signifies a position of priority, a place of preeminence. Perhaps you tend to devote your first sparks of attention each day to the newscast or your email, to the various trends or updates you missed while you were sleeping, but those moments are always more valuable invested in waiting before God, feeding on his word, listening to what he whispers to your spirit. While your heart is most open and refreshed and able to assimilate truth. So as you move ahead into each new devotional journey, continue giving him your first waking thought, turned upward like a breakfast bowl, ready to receive the manna. He is always so faithful to supply a fresh word and fresh mercies. Remember the morning principle and prioritize the gathering of manna he offers you. Start each day and each decision with immediate declaration of complete dependence on him. Because the sun's coming up soon, your manna is on the way. So with that thought in mind, as the Israelites did, and I can picture them climbing out of their tents as being an avid hiker and, um, and camper, um, getting up in the morning and finding your food for the day strewn out you know across across the ground and having to go collect it and i can just picture them each waking up and yawning and stretching and going out to gather their day's food and um and knowing that it's going to be there in the morning and that it's going to be all that they need for the day and they're not going to be hungry and they're not going to struggle and it, I think it's an awesome illustration for us today that um, if we get up in the morning and we open ourselves up to what God has for us, 
um, that he will give us all that we need for the day because he already knows what we're going to need. He knows what struggles we're going to go through. He knows which people we're going to talk to. He knows all the things about our day. So why wouldn't we go to him to get the essential tools that we're going to need for the day? And so I believe that going to him in the morning is of utmost importance to gather what we need for the day. And, um, and then again tomorrow, we're going to have to come to him again to get what we need for that day because tomorrow is a different day and we're going to have different struggles and he's going to need to give us different things for tomorrow. And so going to him each day and letting him provide for us what we need for the day is kind of like a no-brainer, but do we do that? Sometimes we don't and we struggle through our day and we wonder, you know, how, how am I supposed to do this? Well, if we would have gone to God and gotten all the tools in the morning, gotten all the courage and strength and all the things that we would have needed for the day, we probably would have been a little better off. He would have um, given us all the things that we need. Um, not to say that he doesn't in as things arise, we can go to him and he can give us what we need, but we can be, I believe we can be better prepared and we can get our, um, when we bask in his presence in the morning, that we can gather the peace and the joy and have a better focus on our life in the morning. And it will, um, it will make for a much better day throughout our day. And I... I'm reminded of one time I was working in a church library and I made some bookmarks and left them in the library there for people. And it said, um, read his word every day. Yesterday's manna won't stay. So in a sense, God's word is our food for the day, but we need the fresh food every day. So anyway, that is it for today. And I hope you all have an awesome, blessed week. And I will see you again next Friday. Don't forget, show me your favorite coffee cups. Let me know how you drink your coffee. Do you drink your coffee black? Do you put cream in it? Do you do the same thing every single day? Honestly, I do black coffee every morning. In the afternoon, I add cream. So let me know what you do. I will talk to you again next week. God bless. Bye.